Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Elliott, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. This is a super, super cool video that we're gonna release. And by the way, my man went from law enforcement to entrepreneurship, which I think is pretty cool. And by the way, he's got a crazy story and it's actually super cool. And by the way, why couldn't this be you? And once he tells you like what he's actually doing right now, every business owner in the world is gonna to wanna to do this. I do this and you're also gonna to wanna to do it as well. Um, so number one, I wanna say thank you for being here. This guy's a savage and obviously he's got his biggest testimony right here, which we're gonna to get to on the back half, right? Um, but I want you to rip, dude. How old are you, by the way? I'm actually 36. Yeah, you look younger, man. You look young. You're 36 years old. I'm going to hand it over to you because you tell your story better than anybody else. It's very inspiring. You're going to want to listen to this entire deal. Yeah. Um, let it rip. You you know where you want to start. No, I appreciate it, Andy. So uh, my name is Paul Alex. This is uh, actually my friend Bryce. He's one of our best client testimonials for my company, Merchant Automation. So, uh, Andy, thank you for allowing us to be on the podcast, man. This is a great opportunity. Came here last year with my dude, consulting team. You're an inspiration team. to everybody. Dude. dude, your story is super cool, and you're doing so good. I want everybody to know what you're doing, and I want you to sh I want you to share. Yeah, man. So essentially, I lived three different lives. I was in corporate America for six years, since the age of 21 to 26. From 26 to about 32, I actually worked in law enforcement. I worked for the city of Oakland in California. Don't ask me That's why crazy. I chose the city of Oakland, bro. Everybody, including my mom, was just like, "You're crazy." So um, I, I told everybody, man, if I was going to be a cop, I'm going to be a cop's cop. You know, I always had that adrenaline rush. Um, didn't really want to be a cop growing up, but at the end of the day. You know, I, w I wanted something different in my life. I wanted sure. something to fulfill me, man. Mm -hmm. And what better yet than we'll actually yeah. helping the community, bro? Giving yeah. back to the people, right? Yeah. And uh, did that. Was five years uh, detective in law enforcement. And uh, the last two years, we did a raid. I used to work for a narcotics task force under the sheriffs. I was the only detective out of my agency to be assigned there. And, dude, just let me paint the picture here, Andy. I was roughly like 28 years old. I only had two and a half years of experience in law enforcement in total. I was a young detective. Everybody else on my team, which was another 12 detectives from different agencies, had about 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So they already looked down upon me, man. And this was my case. So my case was I was chasing a cartel member from Los Angeles. Dude was slanging cocaine. I mean, just big time drug dealer. And um, finally found out that he was at a hotel selling kilos of cocaine well we went to go do the raid during the raid this guy was actually um using heroin mixed with fentanyl at that mm -hmm. time around uh 2018 it was a big fentanyl uh exposure man people were overdosing dude people were dying on the streets thousands and thousands of people so this was a high priority case for our agency and uh when we went through the door my buddy who uh was the first one as soon as we breached the door um he got exposed to it heavily because he was using it was in the air and when you don't use it man you could get overdosed very easily Easily with fentanyl so just when the, in the air just in the air dude wow. like he was literally using it and as we breached through the door like you know the the powder it was just like it got mixed into the air and it's a very small room it was like a motel six wow. so just imagine eight of us plus the drug dealer in there and it we all got exposed dude i was lightheaded luckily i didn't go out uh, but my buddy, who was the first one through the door, within seconds, turns blue, hands blue, falls to the ground. And a couple weeks ago, I had just got shipped out to Quantico for some training at the DEA Academy. And I got trained on Narcan, which is a basically an antidote to help you with opiates. And when this happened, Andy, I went back to my training, man, muscle memory. And I was just like, hey, dude, we got to get the Narcan. And at that time, nobody had it on their person, dude. Everybody had it in the car. So I'm like, get the Narcans. We had to go ahead and actually give him about three to four different antidotes of the Narcan. Finally, he came back alive. And it was scary, dude. He got shipped out to the hospital. We got the drug dealer, picked up, you know, the kilos of cocaine, uh, Good job at the very end. But that night, man, I had dinner plans. <laughs> I had dinner plans by my girlfriend at that time. And um, I didn't make it home till like 2 a.m. I was supposed to be home at 6 p.m. So that day, I wake up. I'm sitting in my living room. And I'm like, is this the life for me? The life that I chose? Yes, I love being a detective. Yes, I'm living the American dream that my mom always wanted me to live because my mom, she's an immigrant from Peru. Mm -hmm. My dad's Mexican. Mm -hmm. They worked extremely hard their entire lives, man. Mm -hmm. So they raised a beautiful family, me and my two sisters who are also nurses mm -hmm. and they bought their little home and they did so much. They worked hard and that's all I knew, man, just to work good hard. People. Yeah, good people, man. And 
Hey, what's going on y'all? I know you're getting a ton of value watching this video right now, but Andy Elliott wanted me to tell you, listen, I'm the number one wholesaling coach in the world. In October 25th and 26th, right around the corner, Andy Elliott and I are hosting in my brand new office in Scottsdale, Arizona, over 9,000 square feet. We're going to show you exactly how to build a seven figure wholesale operation in 12 months or less. Listen, Andy endorses the fact that we know what we're doing. So what we want to do is bring you here to Scottsdale, show you how to find the leads, talk to the leads and get the big fat juicy spreads that I know you all want to get paid. We're talking 20, 30, 40, $50,000 deals. So what I want you to do is text the number below and Andy Elliott and I, We'll be waiting for you October 25th and 26th here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let's finally get paid what you're worth. And now back to the video. You know, there was that moment, that crossroad. I was just like, dude, I'm about to be 29. Do I want this? Like when I have kids, cause I, 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 I've always wanted a family. And when I have kids, do I want my kids to go through this? Like, so then I talked to a good friend at the department who had 15 years on. He always talked about side hustles business opportunities. And he was just like, Hey Paul, you know, you should really look into investing into automated teller machines, uh, ATMs. And I was like, dude, I thought banks only owned that. And this was dude, like almost seven years ago mm -hmm. when he told me this, the, the first time I ever heard it. And it stuck with me for the f next uh, couple weeks. And I just said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. So I bought six ATMs, went out, used my uh, skills from corporate America, man, just talking to people, throw on the old suit and uh, landed six locations within 18 months, landed 30 locations, became financially free. Mm. The biggest thing here though, is that I always tell people this, there's a difference between being financially free and being a millionaire. You can be a millionaire and you can still be broke, man, because you adjust your lifestyle and guess what? You don't have recurring income. So to me, my thought process is I want recurring income so I never have to worry in case something happens to me, my family's covered, man. Mm -hmm. So that's why I loved ATMs and it was such a simple business. Mm -hmm. I'm not the smartest guy, dude. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, I was able to reduce the 80 to 100 hour work weeks that I was working on a weekly basis, Andy. Imagine that, 80 to 100 hours, man, to 40 hours. Mm. From there, I wasn't on social media for eight years, dude. I'm an old soul. I'm an old soul, dude. I still like talking to people just like this, man. Yeah. So, so at the yeah, end of the day, is, well, this is real communication. Th that's what it is. Yeah. Soft skills. We're just in an era right now where communication is at an all time low. Yeah. And it's it's needed. Yeah. So it I is needed. It. Mm -hmm. it is needed. And that's why you know the people online that go ahead and they're actually able to communicate. They're ab actually Super able to successful. articulate. Dude, they're going to be the most successful people mm -hmm. online. That's mm -hmm. what I saw ever since I broke into social media space, digital marketing space. And what I realized, man, is I went back on Facebook. I know I'm aging myself, but I went back to Facebook, dude, and I was just like, this is amazing. This mm -hmm. is different from the time that I was on MySpace, yeah. and you know everybody had the song on their profile or whatnot. And, and uh, I was on Facebook, man, and I was just like, what are all these guys, these business owners, they're on there and they're like selling advice. This is cool. Like, and I've never been big on education, man. I dropped out of college to go to work at 21. Sure. I guess my mom's wishes. Yeah. But I was still be, I was still able to make six figures off of sales. That's mm -hmm. why I believe in sales. Dude. Yeah, sales and leadership will get you rich. Oh, no. Hey, traditional education is okay, but self-development education, like, changing your identity, your mind, who you are, learning some skills, especially in communication, is how you become a millionaire and, and taking risk. You bought those ATM machines. Okay, that risk has a reward. And the biggest risk that most people don't ever take is that they're like, Why, what if it doesn't work? You staying the same is the biggest risk of all. You, you staying in the same place is the most giant risk. And that's why I love like sharing your story and we're gonna share his too. And what you're doing is because Really, everybody's at a, at a big risk right now if they don't do anything. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and, and you're going to get into in a minute how you're saving business owners all of this money, right? And it's huge. As a business owner, like, this is huge. No. We're, 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 kind of what you do next. No, absolutely, man. The next, the next steps is actually very I, – I just never thought we'd be here right now. This is crazy to me how life can change in a few years. All the dots are starting to line up, D aren't dude, they? Dude, it was – it, I always say this with every new level, there's a new devil. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I had to go past 
the level of being comfortable mm-hmm. because I told myself that year. I remember I was working a overnight shift where essentially I would start at 10 p.m. and I wouldn't be out of the office till 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I did that a few nights. So I remember I started my shift and I sat there and I was like, is this really what I want to do for the next 25 yeah, years, man? I, yeah, I go to sleep when everybody's, I mean, I'm, I'm working when everybody's sleeping yeah. and then I'm going to bed when everybody's up. Exactly. I'm just, Hell wasting, no. I'm just wasting away, dude. And, and, and on top of that, <coughs> my, my relationship at the time was just going down the hole, dude. Yeah. Because was, she's living a different life than you. A way different life. Yeah. And you know, I was the breadwinner. So at the end of the day, you know, she would rely on me. Um, we just didn't have communication because I was working different opposite schedules as her. Yeah. So it's just like for, for many of people, everyday Americans, people are actually experience this, man. There's All a lot the of, there's, there's a lot of depression going out there in, in the world, but people don't understand that, that you know, a, such a simple business or a simple investment or just a pivot can dramatically change their life. Like it changed my life, like it changed Bryce's life, like it changed your life. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're watching this, if you're like, man, I'm a business owner and I need to save this kind of money. That's what I want to do. All you got to do, you see the number below? Just shoot a text message. He'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours, go over everything with you. And if it sounds right, kick butt, rock and roll. Also, on the backside of this video, we talked about an earning opportunity actually joining this team from anywhere in the world as even a part-time job making a lot of money. If you're also like, man, I want to know about that. Just text the number below. We'll send you all the information. I love it, guys. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. I use it. I know this is going to change your life. Let's get back to the video. So the next the next steps that happened was actually remarkable. This almost sounds like a movie, man. I know it sounds cliche, but a book changed my life. A book called Digital Millionaire. Books, readers are leaders. Dude. Leaders I, are readers. I wish I would have known that when I was a kid because honestly, yeah. I did not like school. <laughs> well, you weren't interested in school. Yeah. But you were interested in being successful. Yeah. Yeah. So like anybody right now, like understand this, like if you want something, if you want to be successful, then you study people on that topic. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to be good at math. You didn't want to be good at at history. You wanted to be successful. And that's why when you picked up that book, it changed your life because if someone wasn't interested in being successful, the book wouldn't have worked. Yeah. You're just such a good student. You're such a winner in the area of success because that's what you want. This book was just amazing to you. And you're like, this book changed my life. Dude, you changed your life. That book just gave you the the courage to start taking more risk. No, absolutely, man. So what it came down to is it was a story of basically a bar owner who had a successful bar business. And the reason why he was able to have a successful bar business is because he learned Facebook ads at that Mm -hmm. time. So this is back in 2020. Mm -hmm. He then had the idea of teaching other people online how to go ahead and use Facebook ads to run traffic to their tangible businesses. Yep. The guy made $46,000 in a one hour live webinar online. Sure. As soon as I read that, I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? Spending 80 to a hundred hours, basically calling it blood money, putting myself in danger. And I understand that law enforcement fulfilled me, man. I'm a protector. Yeah. You know, I go and I speak out for people that can't protect themselves. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my big why, and I think this is the, the what, what hits the nail on the head, is you need to have a why. My why was my family. Mm-hmm. I wanted to retire my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, she worked hard her entire life. Mm-hmm. And at that time, she was still working as a plebotomist at UC San Francisco. And I was just like, you know, I told my mom one day, I was just like, mom, I'm going to make it happen. Don't worry. She's like, well, you told me this a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, mom, don't, yeah. She was like, don't, don't give up on me. I'm going to make this happen. And look. I was making $250,000 as a cop, mm-hmm. but in California, that's still not enough, man. Yeah. It's still not enough. It's true. It's like making 50 grand in some states. Exactly. Yeah. And people don't understand that. They're like, oh, you're making that much money as a cop. I was like, yeah, dude, but I lived in California. Yeah, you were in Oklahoma. <laughs> I was in California. Yeah. If you're in so, Oklahoma, you'd have been all right. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> or Idaho. I wish, but see, that's the thing. Yeah. The cop business is not remote, mm-hmm. right? You can't make residual income off being mm-hmm. a cop. So now at this stage of the game, I'm thinking smarter, not harder. And I went ahead, read that book, paid $10,000 for my first course, man. April of 2020, sat down in the middle of COVID, okay? Started happening. By March of 2021, I launched a program to actually show people how to build sustainable ATM businesses nationwide. Mm, Made my first $130,000 in digital marketing Mm -hmm. as a one-man team. Mm -hmm. I was still a detective, so I was busting my ass, man. I was working 18-hour days. I was hitting the gym for an hour and I was getting probably four to five hours of sleep still. 
but I had to stay dedicated for six months. Sure. I called it six months of hell, to be honest. Yeah, because I blocked out everybody who wasn't providing value to me mm -hmm. during that time. It has to happen. It has to happen. Yeah, no one will get anywhere without that. No, exactly. And I was uncomfortable, Andy. Mm -hmm. I was extremely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But you needed it. And it I needed it, dude. It made I, you grow. I needed to grow. So it made me grow. And I remember I went to my mom. Mind you, my mom's old school. Mm -hmm. I love her to death. Yeah. But she goes, how much did you make? Mom, I made $130,000 on, online. And then she goes, okay, well, once you make a million online, then you could go ahead and quit your job as a cop. And I'm like, a million dollars? I was like, that's sort of unreasonable. <laughs> Mom, like, really? She's like, think of your benefits. You're, you're an award-winning detective. Don't leave that job. So she put doubt back in my head, man, because she didn't know, she yeah. wasn't exposed to what I was doing. Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't understand. She's born in a different generation, so it's different beliefs. Different beliefs, man, mm -hmm. and I love her to death, but no, I, had I, to ask, I had to ask someone else. And the next person I asked was actually a very good friend of mine mm -hmm. at the department. He just got promoted to a police surgeon at mm -hmm. that time. Very young guy. Uh, I think he was like 22 at the time. Mm -hmm. Young guy. Wow. And um, I was like, hey, bro, look, I just made like $130,000 of, of my program online showing people what I successfully do part time as a cop and uh, with ATMs he's like no fucking way he's like bro put your two weeks now and that's what I did man <laughs> he, he's the one that pushed me he pushed me to be uncomfortable so I went all out yeah, Andy he, he wasn't selfish dude I went all out yeah while everybody else, and this is not to shame anybody at my previous department, because <clears> I love everybody in my previous department. They're some yeah. of the hardest working cops. But majority of the people, when they asked me where I was going, they said, what other department <laughs> are you transferring to? Mm -hmm. Instead of, why are you starting a new business? You know, they just <clears> assumed. <throat> they assumed I was going to stay comfortable and I was just moving to a different department sure. as an escape go. This one friend believed in me. This one friend was just like, dude, just go out, man. The worst... Worst case scenario, and this goes back to going ahead and taking a risk. Mm -hmm. The worst case scenario that anyone can do right now, especially in 2024, with all the information that's out there online, okay, is you take a risk. If it doesn't work out, what's the worst case scenario? You're back where you started. You go back to the fucking same thing that you were doing anyways. Yeah. At least you can say when you're on your deathbed and you can say, at yeah. least I tried. Yeah, I, I tried. I gave, I gave it my all. Mm -hmm. But most people, they're so scared. Dude, and and not and one hundred percent of the people that take that risk, that don't quit, make it. Exactly. Yeah, one hundred percent of them make it. It has but to. They work. just don't quit. It has to work, or it has to work. Mm -hmm. So I did it, man. I sold my house in the best neighborhood in the San Francisco Bay Area. I used to live in Warner Creek, mm -hmm. which is twenty minutes away from San Francisco. And I told my mom that that day, "Hey, mom, sell my house. I'm moving to San Diego. Why San Diego? You don't know anyone out there. I don't." And that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. I want to get inspired by the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, literally, packed up a trailer, moved my cars down there, told all my friends, hey, we're out of here. Moved my girlfriend at the time over there, and we're like, all right, let's go ahead. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. So, got a penthouse with a view of the ocean. Inspired me, man. It's just like it's like your compound here with all the windows. Dude, it inspired me. I saw the ocean every day. Yeah. And I just built. That's it. I just grinded. Every single day, two years later, that same company that I built, we generated over $12 million a second year. Yeah, I love it. That same friend that pushed me to go out, within six months of leaving, I told him, hey, come move to my penthouse in San Diego. You don't have to pay rent. I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to show you the digital marketing game, and I'm going to make you successful. I'm going to pay you four, four times more than what you're making as a sergeant of police. Wow. He's just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. So he comes, he comes with me. We're fucking going ham, dude. My first consultant, he was a kid, a 20-year-old from Australia. Mm -hmm. He gets referred to me by one of my first mentors. Mm -hmm. And then I tell this kid, hey, I would need you to move from Australia to San Diego because I want to mentor you in person. I yeah. want to grind. I want to make a boiler room in my penthouse. We're going to have fun. We're going to work hard. We're going to build this shit up. We're going to be millionaires. I talk to the parents on Zoom. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Introduce myself like, I've been hey, there. so uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm this millionaire from the U.S. and your son's a great sales guy, can close anyone. He's a 90% closing ratio. <clears throat> I need him here. I need to build him up as a leader. And they were like, okay. So got him a work visa, came over. The next years, man, dramatically changed for not only myself, but for thousands of people in the United States. Wow. Over 3,000 people in the United States. We've helped change lives, dude. Mm. I've met and networked 
with big time players, nine figure earners that were like, Paul, your story is so inspiring, dude. We want to do business with you. Mm -hmm. And essentially, this is why we're here. Yeah. So show us. This is where we actually came to to you, Andy, because mm -hmm. I know that you that you actually mentor thousands of people yeah. around the United States, and I know that they all work hard because they're mainly in sales. <clears throat> they work commission. And I'm a big believer in working hard and playing hard, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we're a big believer in making residual income. Yeah, every person in the world, most people, unless they you know sell sell their dreams for a salary and they're just done, they either have a part time gig that receives payments, or they have a business that receives payments, or they work for a company that receives payments. So 100% of the audience that's listening to this. As you get into this, like it may not be directly for you, but you could be the hero to help someone else save money. Absolutely, So make sure you man. pass that on. But go, go ahead. It's, I just want to say that. It's the ripple effect, dude. Yeah, it's huge. It's helping other people. But then this is also allowing you to become financially free as well, like it did to me when I was in law enforcement. So what we ended up doing is I ended up uh, networking with two phenomenal entrepreneurs, Robson mm -hmm. and John Sarabi out of mm -hmm. Los Angeles, California. They've been in the industry for 18 years. Mm -hmm. They have a big company, ISO company, independent sales organization mm -hmm. called Paybotics. Mm -hmm. Well, this company, I ended up teaming up with them. They were like, hey, we want to mix the old school merchant services business, credit card processing, mm -hmm. with the new school mm -hmm. digital marketing. Because that's, that's right. where the world's going, man. Facts. Mm -hmm. Digital. So I was like, let's rock. So February 2023, we launched a program where we essentially build <clears throat> these businesses for anyone in the United States, fully done for you or with you. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest concept behind this is not only do we get you the, the leads, but also we go ahead and we train you up with my mentors mm -hmm. in merchant services. Mm -hmm. so we do weekly clinics. We have transformed hundreds of lives in one year, man. That company, I went back to startup mode, Andy. I told that one friend I told you about mm -hmm. that told me to, hey, leave the police department. Mm -hmm. He became my COO of my first company. I told him, hey, you're going to take CEO duties. I'm going to leave for 90 days and build this new company called Merchant Automation. And you're going to be partner, 50-50, brother. He was like, really? Yes. <clears throat> he wow. didn't know what we were building. Yeah. I just told you, you're just going to be 50-50, man, because that's the way I roll. I find leaders and I go ahead and I build them with me, man. That's huge. That's what it is. Yeah, they're part of your big picture. They're, they're part of the big picture because you know mm -hmm. you can't build an empire by yourself, bro. No, and you don't want to. I, 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 trust me. Yeah. It, it's, you, you, get, you get so jaded fast, mm -hmm. and also you go ahead and you just lose focus on what the needle moves are for your business. Yeah, it's good to be around people that remind you every day why you're doing what you're doing. No, absolutely, man. So I went ahead and I built this company up, Merchant Automation. We were able to enroll our first beta clients and the company was able to generate over a million dollars within 45 days. So tell us what this does. So what this does, uh, we primarily focus on a strategy called the cash discount program. And what this program does, it actually saves every small business owner, mom and pop shop in the world, in the United States primarily, and in Canada, we're able to go ahead and actually wipe out all of their fees. So United States, Canada. Correct. Anybody that is processing any kind of form of credit card payment. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And what we do is we simply just switch who's paying for the actual credit card processing. We like to call it a convenience offer. Yeah. We took a new strategy well, I like to that. it. Convenience <laughs> offer. That's good. <laughs> we, yeah, we, but that's what it is. It's a convenience offer. I love it because you can pay cash or you can pay card. Correct. Right? And it works so well because like of the first. Mm -hmm. It works so well because of the first company, because all the clients, the thousands of people that we helped with ATMs, guess what? They went ahead and they actually invested into starting their own merchant services business because now they kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. They either get paid by either the ATM or they get paid by people charging that convenience fee. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You're also helping small business owners out there, man. Oh yeah. You're kicking ass. You're helping the small business owner. You're helping not only you grow your residual income and guess what? People that have full-time jobs, we're talking about nurses, federal judges, doctors. I mean, I even got lawyers doing well, this, man. Well, if it's you amazing. think, if you think about it, if you know, most credit card companies charge anywhere from 5%, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And if somebody ran a million dollars in gross payments, who cares what the product is, what they're buying, what the, income or the net income is on that million right if they just swiped a million 
they're going to pay fifty thousand dollars exactly to the credit card company. Yeah, yep. that's six hundred thousand dollars a year, <clears throat> um, or no, yeah, more. It's six hundred thousand a year that you're just paying and giving over to use their credit cards. And so basically, those people keep that all as profit. Explain how that works. So yeah. it's a convenience offer. Yeah, so it's a convenience offer. So at the end of the day, you have your ISO, mm -hmm. and then you have your affiliate agent. Your affiliate agent is the person that actually goes ahead and sells the product to mm -hmm. the merchant. Yep, him. And this is going to be Bryce. Yeah, I choose Bryce. Bryce goes in. He, he walks into a, a grocery store. I'm just giving an example. Correct. And or it could be a digital online place too. So it could be you know virtual or digital, right? Correct. I mean digital or a brick and mortar. Yes. And then he says, you know, how much are you taking in credit card payments? And literally, you're like, we can let you keep all that. Yeah. And then basically, what happens is you install it, you get this set up, and then when they run the payments, um, the convenience offer just says card, right? Like credit or cash. And if they choose cash, there's no fee for anyone. That's it. And if they yeah. choose credit. It shows what the fee will be, and it adds it to it, and the client pays it. Is that That's right? it. Very simple. It's a no-brainer. And by the way, it's being done everywhere now. Yes. I mean, I'm just saying, like, like it's, it, you know, 20 years ago, people were like, oh, that's scary, mm -hmm. right? But now it's done everywhere. It's like, you know, you walk into a Starbucks, right? Like, walk into anywhere. Walk into mm -hmm. a gas station, and it says, do you want to leave a tip? Have you noticed that? Oh yeah. Every, Do you want to leave a tip? It's like, it's like, even for commodities in a restaurant, they used to say, "Do you want to leave a tip?" Because somebody served you for an hour. But now, every what do they do? They say swipe, and they turn the screen around, and they say, "Would you like to leave a tip?" <laughs> and you're like, "I just bought a drink." Like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> it's a it's a voluntold, man. <laughs> bro, bro, it's like it's like honestly, it's what the this is very normal. Yeah. Right now, this product, you bringing this to the market, which obviously you're very successful. It's not a startup anymore. It's massive. You said there's 3,600 users that you currently have right now, and you know there's so many people that are gonna business owners are gonna save all this money. Clients are already doing this. Yeah. The screen's going around. They're clicking. This is normal. This is a normal deal. This is 2024 plus. This is the generation we're in. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna stay this way, and people are getting more use of this every day absolutely man yeah. i mean i love the way you broke it down so simple but this is the reason why i brought bryce bryce is actually mm -hmm. one of hundreds of our clients but he's one of our most successful clients because he gets it mm -hmm. he is an all-american guy blue car guy just like me he actually runs a company himself and decided to still make this happen man mm -hmm. this is why i was like bryce you got to come up please please Come talk to Andy. Come show the world. There's no excuses, man. If you want to make money, you want to be financially free, you want to go ahead and actually live. Hey, you got to listen to this guy's story. Yeah, so I'm Bryce Camerzo. I'm just a blue-collar guy from Colorado, really. You know, I grew up, like, farming and ranching, so those are my values and just worked hard. You know, I always, always saw, like, my family, you know, we had enough. Like, we had to say, you know, we're, we were always land rich, but cash poor. Like, that's mm. every farmer. That's every rancher. Like, we were never poor. We were, we were middle class. Like, always had a decent amount, but we were never rich. You know, like, mm -hmm. I had rich friends. Mm -hmm. And I always had something in my mind. I didn't realize it later. I'll talk about the book I read that changed my life. Because, like, you know, reading and self-development, like you guys are about, mm -hmm. that's huge. And that changed my life. I always knew, like, from some of my, like, wealthier friends and, like, their dads, like, you know, their dads, like, they're doing multiple stuff. Like, they have all these other form of income. And, you know, what else they have the free time. Mm -hmm. Like, they're taking us to the lake every weekend, midweek even, to go jet ski they're not spending whatever. time on a farm There's yeah yeah they're, in. they're not having to clock in and be there for 12 hours like they yeah. have more free time so i always knew there was something more out there so fast forward you know like went to college you know wrestled in college and wrestling has been a, a, a big part of my value and like my my life because like you know when you're out there you're alone like that like you learn how to take you it's know competitive edge yeah you mm -hmm. learn you learn to take criticism you learn to take losses and, and keep going forward you know mm -hmm. so that's always been my foundation um i got out of college and like you know just was like man went to college for wrestling, got injured, that didn't work out, but I, I never really studied anything. I just felt like the education system's broken, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started educating myself, like learning, like, you know, investing in myself. Yeah. And I knew, I was like, I cannot keep working in corporate America. At that time I was working for a big oil company, running, uh, you know, oil pipeline and, and pressures like a control room, mm -hmm. working nights, you know, and my wife was working as a nurse and we were working hard, you know, making a good living, but like opposite schedules. Well, well making a good living and not being happy yeah, doesn't work. Making a good living, but not living together. Yeah, I, and like, I know people yeah. that are financially okay that are, hate their life. Making a good living, but not ha and this having gives time you, to live. This gives you all. This gives you. Yeah. This can make you rich and give you a rich life. Exactly. So, like, I was sitting in that oil control room at night, like, do, reading all these books. Like, 
knowing like you know like and like praying like there's something out there you know because like faith is a big thing for me too mm -hmm. you know i'm like praying there's, there's something out there there's something better i can do more um and i read rich dad poor dad and like all the lights went off it was like you know you hit the slot machine it's like ding 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 i'm just like mentally going off I'm like this is it like i've got like the days of like our grandparents days right where you just it's enough to get a good job invest a little bit and do all that and you'll be fine collect social security mm -hmm. like come on like i i know I'll, we'll never see social security we got to go and make it happen ourselves and like mm -hmm. one source of income just ain't enough like where we live in colorado it's pretty expensive it's not bay area expensive but it's just not enough you know like you said there's a few co places in this country now where 50k you know like a teacher's salary is going to cut it and a lot of the people we help are like teachers like that yeah so i read that book you know, we started working hard and investing and we, and we were putting money away. We actually got into real estate. Like we bought some of our first rental properties and that was huge. Like that gives you that huge sense of like freedom. Right. But you know, they're, 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 they're just like decent, you know, single family homes and that's helped us. But I always knew I'm like, Brittany, there's still something else out there, you know? So like we were praying and like trying to find something else. Um, I left corporate America cause I just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. You know, like mm -hmm. was, I was, I'm, I'm like a free, I was a C student, right? Like I always knew how they say in school like right like all the a students work for c students like mm -hmm. that was me i was never meant to work for somebody i was meant to like control my own business so her dad at that time had some health problems and um was like hey i got this little flooring business you know it's not it's not much but it's enough like why don't you take it over and build it up so um you know they were never a big business i built that up and we do two million a year now that's good and job, man. 16 16 employees you know and um you know so super blessed in that way but again with my flooring business i was like you know i'm waking up at four or five in the morning I'm driving from basically I live closer to Cheyenne, Wyoming than Denver, Colorado. I'm driving to Denver. I'm driving to the Springs. I'm driving mm. to Steamboat Springs, Vale, on then back home all in one day, checking on crews, managing jobs, making material deliveries, running my business, which is which is making me good money. You know, it's I would even say it's mm -hmm. making me wealthy, but mm. I'm losing everything. Like, you know, I, I we have kids, so three kids now. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to be that dad who You're watching the time go. I don't want to be that dad that can send my kids to any school, right? Like buy my kids anything, but I can't buy time. Like my time is more valuable mm -hmm. than anything. And I think Facts. a lot of Americans can resonate with that. Like, yeah. time, you can have all the money in the world, right? What good is it if your kids hate you, you know, they, they don't relate to you, right? They would rather have been poor and had that time. And, and I kind of felt that too growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my dad worked hard and stuff out on the farm and everything. And then, um, you know, I was like, I wish I could have, like, just done more, you know, like, done more quality stuff, went on vacations and spent that quality time. Well, most people, we live in a generation, I'm just going to say as he finishes, we live in an era right now that taking an opportunity like this, someone, it doesn't take but a couple hours a week. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. like, like a couple hours a week going back 20 years ago would be going to work for a 20, you know, $20 an hour job for three or four hours a week, or you being a cop and going to work um, as like part time, you know, for security. Yeah, yep. Right. Security. It's like, it's like, dude, well, how many hours can you give now? You already gave all these hours to that. And these yeah. hours, they only pay one time for one hour. The work you're doing, that one hour pays forever. Yeah, exactly. like Like people don't think, what if I could spend an hour and make, a, people are like, well, you get paid $100 an hour. What if you could work an hour and it paid you $20,000 for the rest of your life, that one hour? Like to make a little like, like reference that's, to oil. oil yeah. like, I told Paul, I'm like, dude, all these machines, all, all like whether it's ATMs or the credit card terminals, right? They're all like little oil wells. They just pump out oil. They pump out money for you That's right. day after day. So like that was like, man, this is awesome because there's a lot of guys making a lot of money selling cars, making money selling solar, making money selling whatever. But if you stop selling, you, you stop earning. Yep. The I day you this. stop is the day the money stops. Yeah, I could build this up. Mm -hmm. We have a portfolio. I can say, hey, I'm taking a year off. I'm not working at all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to go live a hippie life on an island in the ocean. And I'm still going to make my money. You have you know? choices. Like, yeah, we, I, we have choices. I, I you have choices, which we didn't have growing up. Mm -hmm. And that's super cool, man. Yeah. And you never know. Today, you're good. If in two years, your wife goes, we need to take these choices. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, all right, we did it. You know what I'm saying? And we can do it now. I mean, point proven, I got in a fender bender recently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, man, if I was injured, like paralyzed, like what Paul's done and what these guys do, that saves my life. Like I can still have income you know I can, your family's I in a good be, place yeah, yeah yeah i don't i don't have to Super be able important. to lift 50 pounds or go up a flight of stairs you know mm -hmm. like we can you know anyone can do this it's crazy you know it, and it'll just produce money so fast forward to when i found paul i actually found him on facebook and like a lot of people you know just 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 straight talk is like i was like oh this is this is a gimmick or like you know am i gonna get ripped off but i kept looking into it i kept looking into it and, I, and, I, and the more i looked into him i'm like you know his story that he just told resonated so much right 
and you know started talking to his to his team you know fantastic team and i'm like you know i think this is legit and so like we prayed about it mm-hmm. and we're like you know hey i think this is the right choice so you know we bought in we did it and i cannot even tell you like just how blown away i am in seven months that was only seven months ago you know i'm i'm at over probably 35 accounts now mm-hmm. um making money for me you know while i sleep while i work and run that's my normal crazy. business hey ain't nothing like going to sleep and yeah. waking up with some extra money in your bank that's it ten ten thousand i tell people all month. the time i said dude when that happens you're yeah. like wait a minute i see life differently now yeah so like i went to do this to be like hey you know to have a little bit more money to put away towards like buying an extra rental property or whatever like if i could just make a thousand bucks a month Brittany, that'd be pretty cool right like that'd be great yeah do it and, and, you know, she's at home taking care of our kids, so I don't want her to feel like she has to go work all these hours as a nurse. Parks. And and, and who's, who's raising our kids, you know? So, like, I wanted to provide her with that freedom. And I had no idea, like, the goal was just to make a couple grand a month, you know? And here I am now making 10 grand a month while I'm running my business, while I'm asleep, while I'm living my life. And, and In seven months. So, you know, my goal is hit 20K, and then I'm going to make a decision on my flooring business, you know, whether I keep doing it or sell it, mm-hmm. go full-time into this. You know, I think that's really the vision. Like, that's really the plan. Yeah, well, in seven months, with the part-time work you put in, you built up 10 grand a month in residual income. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a full-time job, a good full-time, a good job, full-time job for a lot of people. Yeah. And you're not even having to do that work anymore. It's just working yeah. for you. There's no overhead. There's like no, if you like, stop yeah. now and you said, I'm not going to do it anymore. You mm-hmm. still got 10 grand a month coming in. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and anyway, so there's two, there's two things that are important. I want you to finish, but number one, if you're a business, like, like you make sure you text the number. Okay. They'll get you all the information you need. That way we can get you set up. Mm-hmm. But number two, this earning opportunity, anybody qualifies for it. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I was looking into stuff like, you know, um, digital marketing and um, uh, drop shipping and all these different forms to make side, side, you know, money, like a side hustle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, none of these really feel like they fit. When I found this, you know, it's funny. Like I didn't, I, like everybody knows what this is. Everybody uses this. Everybody taps their card on this mm-hmm. numerous times, dozens of times a day sometimes. They don't know what it is. But when I, once I found out that you can make some money off that, I was like, wow, like this is real. This to me resonated. It was more real than like drop yes. shipping any of those things. And then factor in the whole residual like model of it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, you can't go wrong with this because you can still have your day job. Like if you're a teacher and you want to do something in the summer, do this. Don't go landscape and break it right. back. Do this. Hell no. Yeah. Well, this number one, this helps people. It saves business owners yeah. money. Okay. Number two, the small little fee that it is, it's nothing when a no. client's checking out. Okay, so it doesn't matter, and it's going on everywhere, and little things are added here and there and there everywhere. So it's just it's just become a part of normal everyday life. And yeah. then once you sign up that account, you get paid off that account forever. Yeah. And so like it's it's very passive. And, and 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 money, money is spent all day long on these machines. It's just very normal, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like we live and and you can do this as a digital product. So you could get a hold of people that run digitally, and you could do brick and mortar. Absolutely. So it's really unlimited. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, like every business owner right now is trying to figure out how to create more bottom line profits. That's it. So like yeah. there's the sell is like, do you want to make more money? Yeah. You know, like at the end of the month, just look at their credit card statement and exactly. that right there would piss you off. So I go into restaurants all the time. I like a lot of my portfolio is restaurant or, mm-hmm. or food based. And I tell them, Hey, you know, compared to 2018, 2019, how much more are you paying for tortillas, meat, you know, bread, whatever it is. And they're like, a lot, you know, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot more. Yeah. Their and margins like, are going down. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and, and how much more are you? And you got to be competitive. Well, how much? You know, yeah. they, they care for their employees, right? Business owners, and I know because I have employees, I, I got to keep up with their living wage because I don't want them to feel like they're working for the cheap guy and they can't even make a living in my company. So these restaurant owners are like, how much how much more are you paying the employees? You got to pay them more because the cost of living is up. Inflation is crazy high right mm-hmm. now. This helps. I have a you know restaurant that I helped, $7,000 a month in fees they're saving. And he was nervous to lose customers. And I'm like, you know, you can't afford not to do this. Give it a shot, you know, because... You know who started doing this? The government. At the DMV, they were the, like one of the first to pass that That's what I say. It's everybody's already everybody's programmed already to do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an, a scarcity mindset and abundance mindset. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so like number one, it increases your bottom line, right? Like super simple. Right. Um, n- number two, like you need to understand what era we live in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, Convenience. Well, I was going to say like yeah. what era we live in and how people operate. Um, with debit, credit, all this stuff, like – 
like people don't really run debit much anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even think I have a debit card. I don't even know if they still make them. Um, <laughs> right. Because, because, but, but, but the credit though mm-hmm. is what everybody uses. They want the points. And by the way, the customers want the points. Yeah. Well, for the customer to watch. So that's one of my, that's one of my object. Like we, we, we as salespeople, right. You don't even have to be a good salesperson to do this because you're, you're solving problems that, that they need a solution for desperately. So mm-hmm. it's an easy sell. It's an easy, you don't have to be, you know, like upselling them on a car or anything like, like they need this, they're going to buy it. Yeah. You just got to make them see the light and you know, well, cause the credit card companies are screwing people Exactly. because 100%. yeah. Cause they're like, Hey, we'll give you points to go use your credit cards exactly. because yeah. we're whoever run takes my credit card payment. I'm going to freaking go charge their ass 5%. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it's now, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, Business owners have been getting screwed and customers are getting taken care of really good. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the customers want the points and they don't care about five, 10, 15 bucks. They don't give a crap about none of that. Yeah. And it's like if you're a business They're owner just thinking moving. about doing cash discount, whether you're, you know, your average, your average single transaction is like a restaurant, 20, 30 bucks, or you're an HVAC guy, you know, doing $2,000 at a time for a system replacement. doesn't matter. You can do this because like, look, customers are putting that on their credit card and it's kind of a wash. So if you go to a restaurant, right? They're gonna get that three and a half, four or five percent back, cash back, miles, whatever the Facts. reward is. So the customer is getting their reward back. You passing it on is no big deal. It's it's kind of a wash for the customer at that point. But when as a business owner, if you're eating it, you're the only one losing. The customer is like gaining mm-hmm. off of you. Yeah. You know why should I? I tell the business owners this all the time. I said why should you be the one losing? You're providing a service, right? So for your customer to pay sixty cents, eighty cents, and a lot of times that's what it is. If we're just talking sixty cents extra, right? on every customer for them. It's nothing like when I, I don't even ask for a receipt, like probably a lot of us were like, no, no receipt. Um, you know, they, they, they see that on there. They, they don't care about the 60 cents, but for you to lose 60 cents on every customer and you're seeing thousands of customers a month, that's a huge loss. Mm-hmm. Big money. That's a big yeah. money loss. Yeah. And, and it's the game of numbers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, we, we were, I wasn't very good at math, but I got math, good at math pretty quick when I became a business owner. And then, um, yes. Um, super important. So everybody watching this, right? We covered two things here. Number one, the first part of this, we covered like your story, like from, like I said, law enforcement to entrepreneurship. And because you made a decision to change your life, you changed your family's life. You changed all these people's lives. Now you changed his life. Now he's changed in other lives. It's just cool. Like the impact you wanted as a police officer, you're creating the impact in people's lives now. And it's cool. And, and I see how happy you are. I see that you're seeing what human beings are capable of, right? Yeah. Like, like truly like living a rich life and then also like getting rich. Like there's nothing wrong with money. Making money allows you to help more people. If you don't make money, I see the cross on your neck. You can't give money at church. <laughs> you can't do any of that stuff. It yeah. doesn't happen. You can't help someone out in need. You really can. Okay. Um, you know, so guys, everybody right now, this is super important. All right. Number one, there's going to be a number on the screen. If you're like, I have a business, big or small, it doesn't matter. You run $5,000 a month in in credit cards, you run $500,000 a month, you run $5 million. It really doesn't matter. I want you to text the number. We'll reach out to you. We'll show you how this works. Super simple. When you see it, it's it's common sense, no brainer. You're going to be like, holy crap, I just saved myself a ton of money. You just gave yourself a massive pay raise. And then number two, if you're looking for an earning opportunity and you're like, man, you know, like I wouldn't, I want some passive income. I want some additional income. And by the way, even if you did it for a year, okay, you could create, like he did in seven months, $10,000 of income that could come in over the next 10 years and you didn't even have to do it anymore. And you could reach out to a couple of your clients and make sure they're happy and, you know, and that's it. And you're just, you're good. But I know that you guys all want a big life. And I know if you're a business owner, you want to, you want to get a pay raise and increase your bottom line. So um, anything you want to end out as we close it? Yeah, man. I mean, like, you just got to go out there and get it, man. Life is about fulfillment. At the end of the day, all of us can make money, mm-hmm. even you watching right now. I mean, but at the end of the day, you got to see what's important. What's your why? Mm-hmm. You know, my why was my family. Same thing with Bryce. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're part of the same culture. Same thing with you, yeah, Andy. Facts. I mean, at the end of the day, this is why we push to the next level every yeah. single day, bro. Yeah, I want to take care of everybody, but I would definitely want to make sure my family's proud of me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and when they see you helping people. Your mom did. It didn't matter if your mom saw you busting bad guys or helping people. As long as your heart's in the right place, you're doing the right thing, and, and she's proud of you, and you're happy ultimately. Because I know people that do things all the time, and they don't have a passion for that anymore, yeah. and they end up miserable. And you have a passion for entrepreneurship because this game is changing every year, and you're learning every year. And I learned that progress creates growth, and progress makes people happy. 
Oh, absolutely. Man. Yeah, like progress is the secret to being happy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've never met anybody that has progress in their life that's miserable. It's absolutely. people that have zero progress that are actually miserable because they're not growing. I love that. So it's a little secret progress. Yeah. No, yeah. that's good, man. Yeah. But yeah, for anybody that basically wants to work with us and wants to get more information, do their due diligence, mm -hmm. they completely understand. Reach out. Yeah. Reach out, www.merchantautomation.com. They can also catch me on Instagram, Paul Alex, and then Bryce. Yeah, they can find me on Instagram at uh, Bryce Camerzal or B-K-K-A-M-M -M is my Instagram handle. And I'd say to anyone thinking about doing this as an earning opportunity, you know, do it. It's well worth it. You know, I now am one of the guys doing the trainings and helping people, you know, because I'm, I'm all about, like, giving back, right? Like, these guys did right by me. They were great to me. It's, a re it's, it's the real deal. It's a real program. You get all the support. You don't have to be – we have some of the most, like – Yeah, you don't have to be good at sales. People. You're a farmer, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I'm just saying, like, you don't have to be salesy. All you're yeah. going to do is just provide a service. Yeah. And it we just – it's a service safe. that just keeps on giving. That's yeah, so I wanted to say that. Like, you yeah. don't have to be like me, like a sales guy. No, no, <laughs> like, yeah, not at all. You're, you're like no. just introducing the product, and like the product sells itself. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, easily. so. Um, Absolutely. I love that, guys. Hey, listen, everybody, have a blessed day. Kick butt. I know this is something that could work for you, or if not, I want you to think about somebody it could work for, and I want you to share the video to that person, okay, guys? So we love you. We'll see you in the next podcast. Let's kill it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.